Peggy 18. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of How to Start Your Zoo Properly. On the first episode, we have covered setting up the first enclosure, some basic stands which will provide certain nourishment or entertainment for your guests, the fact that you need to put down a lot of donation boxes, and we are gonna actually try to cover getting more dinosaurs on this episode. Now in order for us to get there, we are gonna require one more day to be finished, therefore I'm gonna speed up this day because we will require five heart points in order for us to go into the hatchery and get potentially like the triceratops or stegosaurus for our park so that we can put in additional dinosaurs now the reason behind me wanting to put in more dinosaurs is that if we have for example three dinosaurs instead of just one we can get three heart points at the end of the day so it will be much faster process for us to potentially obtain some of those heart points and once we get them we can start uh, obtaining some of this tech which will help improve our dinosaurs happiness as we will be able to give them certain toys or shelter or just reduce the stress which they have from being seen by so many guests I'm gonna put down one more donation box right in here just to make sure that the people who come to visit will give us some more cash and one important building which I did not cover on the previous MP on the previous episode is the employee building now this building looks super uninteresting uh, the problem is also that it costs few thousand dollars the great thing about this structure is that if you place any of your employees inside they will go under a rigorous training so currently if we take a look at our employees we see that we have people who are at level 2 or level 1. One of our actual staff can be upgraded. So this is for one of the janitors. So what we are gonna do is increase his speed, his ability and his personality so that he is more proficient, efficient and fast at his task. But if we were to put him into the building or the employee building what can happen is that we can level up for example our scientists really fast and what this does is that they are gonna be able to grind to let's say like level five or seven and therefore they will be much more effective at uh, doing their tasks so for example working at the research station or giving the presentation to our guests here so once the park closes, we are going to be able to take a look at the overall summary. Our dinosaur here is doing fine, so hopefully she will give us that one heart point so that we can cover getting more dinosaurs. We are going to get a party ready for a portal so that we can go on an excavation run. And once we do that, we are going to be able to build a second enclosure. Now, of course, there is the way for you to potentially put in four Ankylosaurus in one exhibit. Because this can be all connected, you can create one actually really massive exhibit over here. So the enclosure would go from here behind this building and around these two also and this would create a large enough space for you to squeeze in like three more ankylosaurs because we want to get four dinosaurs based on the main requirement and we need to increase the appeal of the park to 500 points so we are still missing three dinosaurs and based on the traffic here we can see that most of our Visitors tend to stay just here. So if we were to open another enclosure somewhere around here 
they will start to move further into the park. So let's go into the other day. We have those five hard points and I should be able to therefore obtain another species of dinosaur so that we can extract a different type of fossil. So in case you did not see the previous episode, which I would highly recommend for any of you to go and see, what you need to do when you are obtaining more species is to go into this hatchery and here you are able to see that the dinosaurs will cost you 200 science points and 5 hearts. This is for the basic class. Now here we have actually some skulls for the stegosaurus. So and also we have footprints for a certain topsy a family. That's interesting because the Stegosaurus belongs into a the Stegosauria family, while the Ceratopsia is for the Triceratops. So basically we have half of what we require for either one of those species. Now I'm gonna actually go for the Triceratops here. So we are gonna unlock this class and since we have it available now what we can do is go into the portal menu and here we are gonna switch to the Ceratopsia and therefore our crew will go and try to recover the skeletons and footprints and of course I'm gonna have to purchase the gems as the third ingredient in order to get the dinosaurs. So I should start actually thinking of building another enclosure and here you have a lot of freedom of how you decide to build this. Reason behind is that theoretically speaking you can put a pathway through here and therefore your guests can get to whatever enclosure you will decide to build in this part of the park much easier. Or if you want to make them travel and see all these stands which you can put theoretically down here then you can just build this enclosure and cut off this pathway so that for example the research station is nicely covered so that is probably what I'm gonna do here I'm just gonna shut up now I'm gonna build this part of the park and I'll talk to you once I have constructed the second enclosure for our park. So the second enclosure is constructed, we are gonna go and dig for the fossils. So once again, you will need to find the best way to uncover all the fossils. There is no proper way for you to do this, this is just a really pleasant distraction from you running the zoo and uh, you will most likely enjoy this of course everyone will have their different techniques and tactics on how to most efficiently uncover any of these fossils but uh, yeah i really have to give it to the creators for putting this into the game it's a really pleasant distraction from running the zoo at certain times I really hope I did not destroy the skeleton over there and it looks like might be missing something. So now we should be actually able 
if we would go here to get the Triceratops and if I want to do that I will need to purchase two of these gems go into the hatchery and here we are gonna actually go for the two Triceratops X now the chicken somehow did not die from laying such a massive egg and what we are gonna do is place those two eggs right in here so now we will have another enclosure ready for our guests and also since we are expanding the count of animals my suggestion is to go into the hiring and get your hands on another veterinarian trust me this will help you in advance also, we're going to make sure that we put down something for the feeding purposes and because we are dealing with more dinosaurs, once they hatch we'll be able to put in the order for what we need to get our hands on. So we are going to be at four dinosaurs thanks to expanding the zoo and this will start to draw in more visitors so i'm really hoping that this cluster at the start will start dispersing but i'm really happy that i have decided to put in at least some form of stand or some sort of shop in order to make the guests spend more money as we did cover this on the first episode the ticket sales are usually at a certain level and most of your money will come from merchandise food or drinks or the donations so make sure you put down all those donation boxes okay so we have another day another shipment of bushes has arrived so we should be set up properly And we are gonna have to wait for them to hatch. Now here we have few choices of how to decorate this place. You can theoretically keep the boxed wildflowers over there. Or if you want to, you can squeeze in like a gazebo, put in like an info booth. If you are really, really going for more science points, you can put in additional stone science presentation. I would personally not advise to put in here like the hot dog stand because this is where the guests can see the dinosaurs so definitely don't do something stupid like that and we are gonna put in at least some form of lighting and of course we are gonna put down that donation box Soon our dinos will hatch and we are going to be able to start getting more visitors. The, our Ankylosaurus is getting really frisky here with the enclosure but it should be able to survive and soon we are going to get our two babies. So hopefully fingers crossed we are going to get a boy and a girl because if we manage to do so the social aspect of their requirements will be met but unfortunately it can happen that we are gonna get two boys or two girls so we have one boy we have two boys this is why I hate that I cannot predetermine the fact if I can get a boy and a girl from the excavation so most likely I will try to do another run I'm most likely gonna try to like tranquilize one of the triceratops and put in a different egg so that we might potentially get our hands on a girl I accidentally clicked on the gem twice and there is no option for me to resell it which is really bad should be able to grab one more egg so let's try to put it in here reason why it's actually important for you to have 
a girl and a boy is that the social aspect of a hurt animal will jump up and therefore their overall happiness and other aspects will be uh, quite uh, enriched and the dinosaur will be really happy with the enclosure. So we have all... Okay, I'm gonna probably tranquilize you. So he will go and do that. And we are gonna wait for this dinosaur to... So once you tranquilize the dinosaur, you can click on it and it will appear in your dinosaur storage. You can access it simply by getting here and if you would want to release the animal into let's say an enclosure that has been fixed after the animal has escaped, you can hover the animal over the enclosure and drop it in there. But I'm really hoping we're gonna get a girl here and by doing so we might be able to get more happiness out of our new baby triceratops and because the baby has been hatched what we need to do is adjust the biome because based on the information we know that the triceratops would prefer the rainforest type of terrain so we will need to go into the exhibit details we're gonna have to put in a whole lot of water but also we are gonna have to put in a whole lot of other things. But since it's gonna be the end of the day, we're gonna keep that for the next day. Hopefully we are gonna get a girl out of this egg, or I'm gonna have some serious talk with this game. And as you can see, because we have opened up another enclosure, the money is already being generated over here and therefore the donations will go even higher and we might be getting even more parts from the dinosaurs. Okay, so we are going to start off the day by doing the excavation. Since we have the excavation ready, just in case the newly hatched dinosaur will not be a girl and another boy, which will make me super angry, we're gonna see if we can. Son of a. God damn it. Do I have to tranquilize another Triceratops? Ah, oh, man. This, this game really, really rubs me the wrong way when it comes to this. Because 500 freaking dollars for a gem is, especially at the start of your pork, not something that you want to be throwing around all willy-nilly. So we're gonna have two actual Triceratops stored away, which is something that I'm not really happy about, but okay. We're gonna start to change the enclosure to match the requirements of our Triceratops. So yet again, open up the scenery, click on the dino, go into the view my exhibit and start to fill in the requirements.
Okay, now we have the rainforest appeal. So he should be extremely happy with its exhibit. The hunger has been checked. We're gonna have to put in some privacy tiles still because we still do not have access to anything which would be able to provide them with more privacy. So for example, some form of a shelter or such. Therefore, let's put down some of these bushes. This is now nicely opened. So hopefully, fingers crossed, the other Triceratops will actually be a freaking girl this time. Because it's really starting to bug me. Otherwise, I would be just dropping down uh, the males into the exhibit. And when they get older, this might cause issues as males tend to fight each other. And it's, it's just not looking pretty. So, fingers crossed, this is a girl and we will see what will happen. Now, when it comes to the science itself, uh, I have said on if you should get the game that there is no proper way for you to determine which science or research should you go for at first. Uh, you will have to, however, keep clicking through this and determine Uh, which tech do you want to grab? You want to get something which will keep your guests happier, give them more chance to rest up while they eat or something like that, you can definitely do that. My suggestion is to not go for the uncommon gem at the start of the research because getting 600 points is quite a lot, especially with not properly leveled or trained crew of scientists. So I'm gonna go here for this and then we are gonna probably go for the employees learn so that we can grab a few more things and hopefully soon we are gonna be able to get the picnic table. Therefore if we go in front of some concession stands like the hot dog stand or something else we can put down some picnic tables and people can eat and rest up while they are at our zoo. And our Ankylosaurus should be almost big enough to soon grab a hat. Now the hats which you can gather throughout your game will do few things. It can increase the overall appeal of the park and therefore since our goal is to grab 500 of those points uh, it can definitely help us out. It's actually really beneficial on start of your game as some of the enclosure with some of the species which you might have are not as attractive as the later in-game species. So since there are 32 species and you are starting off with 6 starting animals uh, you can understand that these ones will not probably at attract as many guests as you would hope for. But I'm really hoping that we are gonna get at least a girl finally, please, for the love of God. Son of a- Okay, screw it. It's gonna be two boys, Gus and a Ro Roman. So, yeah. Their uh, social requirements will never be much higher. They would actually really need to get a girl in here, but I have already like hatched three additional damn Triceratops eggs, and I am unable to grab one girl, so we are gonna stop dealing with this, and instead we are gonna try to focus on getting another enclosure and another species of dinosaur and therefore we should be able to get close to the requirements of having let's say four dinosaurs or getting the appeal of like uh, 500 points now one problem which you will run into with the game is that the enclosures need to be stupidly large. The thing is that right now the dinosaurs are all small and cute. They are still babies. When you will however fill in your year one or so, so you will go through the spring, summer, fall and winter. And trust me, uh, these games usually take a bit longer to get done. Uh, you will see that they get larger. So you need to think about the fact that the animals will get bigger 
And the reason why I'm talking about it is that if you put in too many animals, the animals within will be unhappy, they can fight each other or do something dumb, and we have five heart points, which makes me super happy, and therefore we are gonna actually go to the town, we are gonna grab the Stegosaurus, and we are gonna send an excavation to grab the Stegosaurus bones. Let the expedition run. We have two successful enclosures. Now, the reason why it would be great for me to actually invest into the employee building is so that I can start leveling up one of these scientists. And the best way for you to do this is to not actually put one of these scientists which you have already earning you science points because you will require a constant influx of these points. The better way for you to deal with this is to actually hire a third scientist and this third scientist can be trained and while he is trained the others are actually working on your behalf. So we can put down like let's say the structure over here. The cool thing is that these buildings can be moved. You have the option to either destroy them or pick them up. We are gonna go ahead, we're gonna put down the employee building over here and as you can see you can have someone be trained. We're gonna grab a scientist. This is actually already a level 2 scientist which is really amazing and like we did cover on the first episode if you want to find your employees you just hover over the icon and it should show you where they are. Now, if we look at the profile, we see that he has certain amount of experience and certain type of points. If we drop him over there, when I pause the game and pick him up because he is not willing to participate, once we drop him off in here, We'll be able to see that whenever the bubble is filled in, his experience will jump in exponentially. And leaving him like that for a couple of days will definitely help you. Later on, when you are done with your scientists, I highly advise you to put in like your veterinarians or your janitorial staff so that the trash is picked up more efficiently and so on and so on. Since we are able to now extract the Stegosaurian fossils, I'm gonna do the mini game yet again. Once again, there is no proper way to do this. It's just a pleasant break for you as the player to change the pace of the game and try to see if you can uncover all the fossils. Now, this should not be actually a massive issue for anyone. At least I really hope so. We have four more fossils, which means I see over here there are two. There is one and the last one is in here. We are now done, and if we want to grab the dinosaur eggs, we can do so, but once again, we require the gems, and unfortunately, we do not have enough footprints, so I'm going to send out one more expedition, and we can start to think of building another enclosure somewhere around here, because the guests seem to be going to this spot quite a lot. I would actually prefer to build the enclosure around here because that way the guests have more ways to experience the park and here we can have like a nice place for concession stands and like the uh, picnic tables and such. So if we go into the science this will cost us 900 points. Well bam. Now we have the better toilet stalls so what I can actually do is have these deconstructed. We're gonna do the same for these two. We're gonna put in the better looking stalls. Now they 
have less of a negative effect on the park's aesthetics and can fulfill the required needs of our guests at much better efficiency. And also I should light up like this road and hopefully we are gonna get some more concession stands soon because I really would hate to be putting these trucks over here. They just take up way too much space. So I'm really gonna be looking towards some other required tech which we can get and I really don't see anything here that would be that beneficial for us the burger bonanza or the french fry stand these both take up a lot of space and are hidden behind other tech which we will re need to obtain Okay, let's see how our scientist is doing. One of our janitors once again can level up. You're gonna do that. Also, you can level up the efficiency at their excavations. So they will be much more useful or much more efficient at doing or helping you while you are trying to get the bones. So you are being trained, but as you can see, we have hired the new scientist uh, and he or she was at level 2 already at level 3 being with us only a day. And as you can see, the enclosure with two Triceratops is earning us a whole lot more money. Also because we have now more attractions for our guests. They are actually moving away from the entry, therefore we are no longer being basically just uh, losing most of our employee or most of our money here by the entrance. And as we build another enclosure in here, this will just keep on improving. So the fun thing is that we are having a rainy day, but I have never actually noticed any dramatic effect of the weather on the number of guests that we are getting. So we will see if that will actually change. Uh, the excavation party is at the spot, so we are gonna grab the Stegosaurian fossils. So now we should have uh, enough to get the Stegosaur for our park. Once again, we're gonna try to grab at least two of them, which means we're gonna have to spend 1,000 for the gems. We're gonna return to the hatchery. We're gonna make sure we have the right species. We're gonna grab two eggs and we're gonna start constructing the third enclosure around these parts so I'll just shut up speed up the footage and I'll talk to you once this has been done
You know what, I'm gonna pick up one more Stegosaur egg just for the heck of it. Really hoping it's not gonna backfire. If I'm gonna get like three boys or three girls, it's just gonna be really messed up. But you can at least understand why I say or think of this as a big issue. We're gonna actually destroy this... Bench. I'm gonna put in a small little walk-in area for our guest. I'm gonna put in some better decorations. And we're gonna put in, of course, donation box. Okay, so that will be the third enclosure. We should therefore have the dinosaur required. So far it did not earn any money. Most of our money is coming from Triceratops. The donations are yet again winning. And the ticket sales will not move until you go and you get your hands on certain tech. So for example, the billboard. If you get your hands on the billboard, this will unlock a display which will draw in more visitors. And more visitors that come in, the more money you can gather from the overall entry fee. Let us transition into the next day. We are already in the summer season. And this is just like the second episode. Triceratops is looking good, the Ankylosaur is looking even better, and because she is now big, we are able to equip the Pirate's Hat. So what you need to do is drag the icon over into the hat, and then when you like click on the dinosaur, you are fairly easily able to like see that it's equipped. This will increase its overall points, and as you can see, we are already at Dino Appeal 500, and we are just waiting right now for the uh, Stegosaurus to be hatched. Once that happens, we are gonna fulfill the last request for now to be successful at the Toronto Zoo. Now the steps which I have covered in these two videos will help you in whatever way you need to do. As you can see, our employees are being highly trained. As you can see, the one who is in the training can get actually 9 points assigned to their speed and efficiency. And if I were to now swap, swap her, with the employee who is at the science post, uh, we will be getting the science points at much, much faster rate. So we are gonna actually hatch the two, three dinosaurs. We're gonna check. We have a boy. I think we have three boys. That is just amazing. So, yeah, uh, now the next thing which we need to do is to earn $3,000, also we need to get like 20 reviews of 2 stars in a single day, so for that we're gonna have to put in a few more things, hopefully we should get some research done here. I still cannot get the billboard, therefore I'm gonna try to go for some more research such as food or something else that might help us out in doing so.
and also we have now those hard points so we can for example invest into this and I like to go for this tech or this possibility because this gives us the option to put down some toys and the dinos love these toys plus if they keep bashing into like these tires or boxes then it's less likely they will be bashing into the damn fences so it's definitely something to keep your eye out for and once again we have a rainforest requirement so we are gonna have to change the exhibit no not pimp my ride exhibit but this enclosure in order to make it the most appealing enclosure and of course we need to feed our animals let's go ahead and uh, not have the money to put in the feeder really happy we are at the end of the day So already we have started the enclosure and we are getting some money out of there. Okay, so we're gonna put in the feeder. We're gonna select the bushes because that is what we currently do have. As you can see, all our animals are of the medium size, so when they fully mature, these will not be like gigantic sauropods. So don't worry about that. And since that is done, here we could put down theoretically something for food, but we have fairly limited budget, so my recommendation is to just uh, set up the enclosure to fit the required conditions And as you can see, the exhibit appears to be too small for our animals. So one of these Stegosaurs will need to be tranquilized. We're gonna hire one more security personnel. We're gonna hire additional janitor. And if I would go here, you should be able to see that the scientist who's being trained is already at level 6. So, far more effective at placing them into the research station. What we're gonna do here, pause the game, put our scientist to be trained, and so that our scientist, who was just trained, can conduct research, and as you can see, getting 40 points instead of 20 at a much faster pace, We'll make sure that you will be getting your science points in super fast. Now what you need to realize with the game is that you will not beat it in one sitting. Uh, heck, uh, if you will be getting all these conditions which will need to be met, the dinosaurs, the older they are, the more medical care they will require as their health can deteriorate and so on. So you will always have something to think of while you are turning your zoo into the best potential zoo in the state or country or wherever you decide to go and make it happen. And as you can see, Despite the fact that we have constructed quite a lot of things inside of the enclosure, 
we were able to grab a stupid amount of donations which took care of all the expenses so anything additional which was like food drinks ticket sales and merchandise was money in our pocket and therefore this should summarize in the two videos which I'm making how you should start up your zoo properly. Like I said, the science and the hearts totally depends upon you. But keep in mind that getting more dinosaurs at the start will definitely help you a lot. As this way you will be able to get in more customers who will spend or donate more money for your enclosures. And by doing this, you should be one successful zoo manager. Now, if you did enjoy these two videos and also you should consider checking out if you should be getting this title i did a video for that on the channel too uh you should consider subscribing to the channel i do all sorts of things from playthroughs to tips and tricks to all sorts of other things which will be more than beneficial for you if you are looking for a upcoming channel here to subscribe to as I publish content on a weekly base you will have always something fun to watch and hopefully you did enjoy the video if you did please consider giving the video a like this will help me with the YouTube algorithm so that more unsuspectful viewers might come across my content and my channel can grow if you have any feedback for me or any other ways you would decide to run your zoo at the start, please let me know in the comment section. I would be more than happy to read about it. But I'm more than happy that you were here with me watching this. And hopefully I will see you in the comments or at the next one. Thank you for watching. Stay safe and bye bye. Thank you.